I wanted to say a word about Moses. Good. Now sit down. <laughs> Yesterday I, I mentioned uh, the plan of the tabernacle that God gives to Moses on Sinai and tells him to copy it in every detail to make a sanctuary for him to dwell in and be with his people. Now, In a sense, we could say that the scripture shows us that the plan of the sanctuary is there even in the very shape of the gathering around Mount Sinai, or Mount Sinai itself, with its peak where God speaks to Moses. And part way out where Moses and the elders of Israel have brunch with God in Exodus 25, they saw the God of Israel and they ate and drank. And then at the feet of the mountain, the people who have been told not to approach too closely. And I'm not the only one who's seen this parallel. I think it's very old, actually. Uh, St. Ephraim of uh, Syria saw it. He wrote his wonderful hymns on paradise, which you can get in English. Uh, with a splendid translation. It's a little booklet, so it's not too, not too thick and not too heavy. In fact, St. Ephraim saw a parallel with three well, more than three, between the plan that the tabernacle was revealed to God, but to Moses on Sinai, not only a parallel with Mount Sinai, but a parallel with the temple in Jerusalem, with the Garden of Eden, and with the Christian church. The last of which, of course, is hardly accidental since we come out of Israel. And what's the point of this disquisition? Well, the first thing I think I'd like us to take away from it is a detail to do with Moses. He's called in the, in the tradition of the fathers and in the hymnography, he's called the God-seer. The God-seer Moses. The one who saw God on Sinai. Just as Sinai is referred to as the God-trodden mountain. The God-trod mountain. Moses is the seer, is the God seer. And what I want to take away from what I wanted you to take, what I want you to take away from this, is the following. Where do you, is the following, the following question and its answer. Where do you go to see God? You go like Moses to Sinai. But where is the Sinai you should go to? Does that mean getting on an airplane and flying to, well, Cairo, or, and then uh, taking that interminable bus over the, over the dunes to St. Catharines? No. Well, you can do that, it's a wonderful <laughs> thing, but um, no. Where is Sinai? Here. Here. That's the peak. And that's the place of God. In a way, we can say of the divine liturgy, 
that is God and heaven made visible. And it's just noted, this is not my opinion. This is an old, old idea. In fact, I think it's why St. Luke gives us the chronology that he does, because it's unique to his gospel, uh, that the revelation of the Spirit takes place 50 days after Pascha, 50 days the Pentecost, and that it's set in the same upper room, that is, the visitation of the Holy Spirit, the same upper room where the disciples had celebrated the supper with Jesus, and where Jesus had said, take, this is my body, and drink, this is my blood. I think there's an awareness even then, even in the apostolic age, that the place of the Christian Eucharist, the place of the Christian worship, was the place of the revelation of God. And remember what the disciples say to the other disciples. The disciples come from Emmaus at the end of St. Luke's Gospel to announce the risen Jesus to the other disciples of Jerusalem. They tell how the Lord was revealed to them in the breaking of the bread. And this is surely a technical phrase already in the late first century for the Holy Eucharist. And that is where you find, you discover the risen Christ. So we are not far from Moses, and we're not far from the apostles and the disciples, and we're not far from the first generation. 2,000 years seem to separate us, and that's a long time, by human reckoning. But we are joined at the very instant by the fact that we are here. At this, the Sinai, the paradise of God, the revelation of God and his kingdom. So, rejoice in your fellowship, beloved. Rejoice in your communion. Rejoice in your splendid temple. But rejoice first and foremost in that you have, in that you are in the company of the apostles and prophets and martyrs and God seers of the revelation of God, to whom be glory with the Son and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Amen.